Mr. Singh, in your report, you speak about inequality and discrimination against ethnic and linguistic minorities. However, in some countries, such as Iran, non-recognized religious minorities are also denied the right to education. Persecution against Baha'is, the largest religious minority in Iran, even extends to children and youth. As you will have noted in documents submitted to your office by the Baha'i international community, thousands of highly qualified young people have been unjustly barred from university for over 30 years, only because of their beliefs. Iran's official guide to participating in this year's national university entrance exam stipulates as a requirement belief in Islam or in one of the religions specified in the Constitution, Judaism, Christianity, and Zoroastrianism. This is explicit religious prejudice as government policy against all but the members of four of the world's religions. Not only does the government of Iran deny Baha'is the right to enter university, it also cruelly prevents them from receiving higher education from any other source. This includes an informal initiative set up by Baha'is, offering university-level courses to young people in their living rooms and kitchens. In May, June last year, government agents searched 40 homes and arrested 19 Baha'is engaged in this initiative. Six of them are still in prison today, serving four to five year sentences. Moreover, throughout Iran, teachers or school administrators regularly insult, abuse, and intimidate Baha'i children and adolescents. Some students have been expelled or forced to change schools when it became known that they are Baha'is. In one brutal case, a teacher beat and burned the hand of a seven-year-old child because she had not participated in congregational prayers. In November 2011, the Minister of Education called for all Baha'i students, even those in kindergarten, to be identified. Mr. Rapporteur, our question is this. Has denial of higher education and persecution of Baha'i children in school been raised in your communications with the Islamic Republic of Iran? And if so, what has been their answer to this clear violation of human rights? Thank you.